Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please give a like, subscribe, and share any and every one that you can. Just swing it out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. My brother knocked down <laughs> the record that's right there. I didn't have time to find a tape, or I couldn't find it, so hopefully y'all can just act like that's not there. But the Celtics beat the Cavaliers 109 to 103, I believe. They take a 3-1 series lead. I'm overall happy, of course, that we won. Um, being up 3-1, you're a step closer to the conference finals, but I just, I, the, the game was disgusting to me. Like that, the Celtics played bad, like real shit. The Celtics played bad in this game. And people are saying like, I don't, I'm not trying to be like overly negative or anything. Like, it's just that the Celtics are, there's one goal and it's to win a championship. It's not to get to the finals again. It's to win the championship. That is our goal this season. So anything that you see in these prior rounds to that that can be a detriment to that or can hold you back from doing that you have to nitpick it yeah like it has to be said so bro i swear to god if we get back to the finals and it's a 10 point lead in the fourth quarter and we start walking the ball up with nine minutes left we're going to fucking lose bro we're going to lose I guarantee you we're going to lose against the Nuggets, the Wolves. I don't I don't care who it is. You get a lead in the fourth quarter, a comfortable lead, and you start walking the ball up in the fourth quarter. There's an they were milking the clock with nine minutes left. I, and and it's not Joe Missoula. I saw Joe doing this the entire time, telling them to go faster. They just don't. So I know y'all come here to hear me talk about shit and ask me questions and you know what i'm saying but i have a question bro like what has to change for the offensive approach to change in the fourth quarter the celtics got some great shots at the end like there was a couple of possessions where they got open looks and they just didn't hit them but the majority of fourth quarter possessions are barely making it over half court you're walking the ball up it's one screen or a fake screen and we're just playing slow, hoping Tatum and Brown can hit some heroic ass shot. A lot of people thought it was Marcus Smart. We traded Marcus. A lot of people thought it was Brad. We've had two coaches since then. It still hasn't changed. So what is it Tatum and Brown? Is it just allowing the point guard to take it up? Is it that? I, I don't know anymore. I really don't know because Smart was taking it up and it was still the same shit. Then Jalen and Jason taking it up and it's still the same shit because Tatum is a slower player like he's he's a he's a fancy set you up he's a methodical type player so it makes sense from tatum's perspective of him bringing the ball up and he's just a little bit slower that's i i can understand that but i just i want that to change bro because i do understand like if you're up 15 you're not trying to take shots with 20 seconds in the shot clock i do understand that but like you don't have to wait till 10 seconds to start your offense. Like, I, I, I just don't understand it. So, in terms of this game, right? We, Al Horford has to play less minutes. This is our Dominican GOAT. This is our granddad. But he's showing his age. And I put a lot of this blame on Joe. Just strictly for the Al Horford thing. Because it is perfectly normal that a 37-year-old thrust it into 10 to 15 more minutes a night with KP Hurt is going to show some signs of not being the same player. That's expected. Now, did I expect him to be 0 for 10 on his last threes? No, but I could have seen the regression coming. Joe has to change something. Somebody please tell me why Xavier Tillman has not played in two straight games. The most common answer that I've heard is that, oh, he ruins the spacing. Luke Cornett does not shoot threes. And if Al Horford is 0 for 10, what spacing is he providing? Oh, he gets guarded. Oh, he's going to shoot them. Tillman is going to shoot the corner three. Oh, tr I've seen Tillman shoot three threes in a game more than one time. So he's going to shoot the corner three. Now, are they going to guard him? No, but Cleveland wasn't guarding Al Horford in this game. He had more open threes than contested ones. I, I hate talking bad on Al Horford. Like... I have never talked bad on Al Horford ever, but Joe is keeping him in the game too long. I don't know if he has the nuts to take Al out because he trusts Al. He's the most trustworthy person. I understand that, bro. But at some point, you have to take 
rain, bro. And we still won both of the games he absolutely shit it in. Again, the point is, when we get to the finals, we're not going to be able to get away with 35 non-effective Al Horford minutes. You can do that now. But I'm not focused on the second round against the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm focused on the finals against whatever teams in the West. I know for a fact if Al Horford is ineffective for his entire stint, that won't be good for us. That's all I'm saying. Again, anything that is detrimental or that can hold you back from the ultimate goal is something worth noting. And right now it's Al Horford. And Joe, and I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying bench Al Horford. I'm just saying, can he play a little bit less minutes? He's 37 years old. He looks slow. He needs a breather. He needs to be refreshed. Play Tillman. He's a good passer, just like Luke. But I'm gonna leave that at that. Um, positive. Drew Holiday was fucking amazing. That's my next video for tomorrow. Is it, it's a Drew Holiday video. I'm gonna tell you that now. He was insane. I thought he was great last game. Drew Holiday might have just played his best uh game as a Celtic. Real shit. He's getting a video, so I don't even want to talk about it too much because y'all gonna hear me talk about it for at least like 10 minutes <laughs> tomorrow. So, um, that Jalen had an iffy ass game, came up clutch sometimes because he's just a clutch player. Um, he makes some tough shots, which we always are gonna need, but it was it was an iffy Jalen game. Like, he had a good box score, but for majority of this game, I thought he played bad, like real shit. But, um, tightened up a little bit in the fourth quarter, which is when we needed it, so good on him. Derek White, I don't know what's wrong. Um, hopefully this is just a two-game thing or a three-game thing. I don't know what's wrong with Derek White. I really don't. Um, I will have to watch closer to like see if I can identify any like similarities in in the games that he struggled. I know that he's not being as aggressive. Surprisingly, Darius Garland has played better defense over these last uh, couple of games, but it still shouldn't be a huge reason why Derek White is struggling this bad. So. Um, I have to get back to you on that one. Or if, if you have an answer, please tell me in the comments. Um, Tatum was was good. Was good. Fine. He was fine. Again, he's just more aggressive. And he has the ball in his hands. Who would have ever thought Tatum would be better if he got the ball in his hands? You know what I'm saying? So 11 rebounds and 6 assists is like an automatic for Tatum in the playoffs. And that is so underrated. Um, and now in the last two games, he's covered that with 30-point efforts. Um, I didn't see what he shot. I didn't see what he shot. Um, I didn't look at any stats. I just hopped on. Who else? Luke was okay. Uh, Pritchard was okay too. Um, he had a huge three again in this game where he shot it and it was just a huge shot at that time. But um, yeah, I don't I don't understand. Oh, and we miss Porzingis, bro. We really, really miss Porzingis. And every time I bring up the Celtics don't have KP, it's oh, the Miami Heat, uh, they didn't have Jimmy. They didn't have Hawkins. Oh, the Knicks are injured. Oh, like, I understand that. I'm not saying that it's equal to those teams. All I'm saying is, is we're missing a goddamn all-star. Like, I'm not saying this on that level. I'm just saying that him not being there hurts our team. So, no matter how good you think our team is, in these last two games, you are seeing why we need Porzingis. Because Horford is 37. He is perfect in the role that he was in with Porzingis. But if he has to play close to 40 minutes a night, he's going to deteriorate. That's just, that just is what it is. And then that means more cornet minutes, which aren't guaranteed to be effective. Every time I say we're missing Porzingis, it gets blown off. Pause. I don't, it's a real thing. We're missing an all-star caliber player. <laughs> Why is that so hard for people to accept? But yeah, um, I just wanted to have a quick chat with y'all a little bit um again comment if, if you have an answer to the question or you just want to talk to me that's fine i love talking to y'all but um this is nick i'll see you guys tomorrow peace